Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel where today I'm playing for the first time with my orange sorbet palette from BH Cosmetics. I got this for $10 on Poshmark and I'm super excited about it because I love orange shadows. I know I'm not a, usually a big fan of monochromatic palettes because I want really colorful looks. However, I now know where I can go for any kind of orange shadow. Deep, light, shimmer matte, this is really, really good quality. I know everybody raved about it. I'm always like a year or two behind. I don't even care. Amazing quality. Love the eye look. If you want to see how I did it, then don't go anywhere. If you're new to my channel, hey, my name's Rachel. I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I love to play with colorful eyeshadow, and I usually post at least three videos a week with all kinds of colorful eyeshadow-related content from palette collection tours, rankings, palette bingos, lots of tutorials, and tons of like chatty get ready with me videos where I choose a theme or topic, and then I just put on my eyeshadow and talk about it. If you're interested in seeing things like that, I hope that you will consider liking and subscribing. I think I want to dip into this shade and probably this one and then grab one or both of those shimmers. I want to keep it a little bit more on the orange side whereas these two while they're beautiful are definitely a bit more coral. I can't wait to play with those two but today I want to go orange and I want to deepen it with um, Passion in Paris. There's a red down here called Pompadou. That's what I want to deepen it with. So let's have some fun. I've already primed my eyes using the Glam Light Icing Primer. I'm going to take a pretty decent sized blending brush and grab the shade Tangerine. I'm so excited to play with this palette. These palettes were so well reviewed. I mean, everyone who tried them seemed to adore them. So I'm really excited to play with it and hopefully I adore it too. I've got Tangerine right here and I'm going to put this in my crease. And then I'll blend it in towards the inner corner and up towards the brow bone. This is like a transition color. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, that's lovely. Oh, I painted my nails last night. I've seen a picture on Instagram. I'll put it above here so that I can give credit to the original poster, but it's these little colorful dots and I painted my own nails last night and I did that. And this is not nearly as nice as that because, I mean, I'm not a nail tech, but aren't they cute? It's like the cutest manicure ever. <laughs> they're adorable. I think they're adorable. And they're so fun and I just think they're really sweet. Anyway, today's video, I want to talk about my favorite British television shows. Now, let me tell you why. I grew up with, basically, we had two television channels that came in. We got Fox and we got PBS. So from Fox, we saw things like The Simpsons and King of the Hill and Family Guy. But most of our television watching experience was PBS. And so... I, I love British television. I grew up on it. I love the sense of humor. It can be very dry, but very impactful. They're really good at insulting people in very creative ways. I just, I really love British television. At one point I was subscribed to BritBox, but then we, um, we cut back on discretionary spending and that had to go. All of our subscriptions went at that point, but I'm no longer subscribed to BritBox, although I would like to be again at some point. And when I was subscribed to BritBox on school days, we would take our lunch break and watch Are You Being Served? or Keeping Up Appearances or As Time Goes By. And they're all just such classic British television. You know, a lot of people might say it's not the most appropriate thing to be watching with a kid. I'm gonna grab the shade Zest with a tighter and denser blending brush, also smaller. There's almost zero kick up in these pans. It's almost none. I'm tapping into the pan going, am I picking anything up? But clearly I am. Here is Zest. I'm putting this in the outer corner. Ooh, this is a nice pretty shade. And um, in the outer corner and onto the lid space as well. So anyway, you might say that it's not appropriate to watch some of those shows with a kid, but <laughs> I mean, I grew up with them, but truthfully, I, I think that they're not as bad as so many more contemporary American television shows. I mean, American TV is not the best. We have some really good shows, but we have a lot of junk as well. And of course, every, you know, there's a lot of British television that's junk too. I don't know. I, um, I've assessed it as a parent and I'm like, you know what? This is okay. She's old enough to understand a lot of these jokes. She's not old enough to understand others and it's okay. We especially like As Time Goes By. The plot of As Time Goes By is Jean and Lionel, um, had met and fallen in love when they were young adults. They were both in the military. She was a nurse and he was in the army and they fell in love, made plans, and then he got posted to Korea. And when he went to Korea, he wrote her a letter saying, I miss you so much, had a wonderful time with you, here's my address. Well, she never got the letter. I'm now taking a small blending brush and grabbing Pompadou in the 
uh, Passion in Paris palette. And I'm just going to use this to deepen this outer corner a little. So Jean never got the letter. She assumed that he did not write to her. And he didn't know that the letter had been lost. So he assumed that she just never wrote back. And so they moved on with their lives. And then they happened to meet again 40 years later, 43, something like that. They're like, well, why didn't you write? And the whole show is built around this, that they had this flaming romance when they were young. And are they too old now to rekindle those flames? It's very sweet. It takes the first season for us to get to know the characters and get to like them, and for Jean and Lionel to be like, yeah, we can rekindle this flame, let's go. <laughs> and then the rest of the series, and it went on for a while, it was many, many seasons. I don't remember how many, but I think like 11 or 12 seasons. It was them building their life together now after four decades of being apart. And it's just a sweet show. That one is, um, as time goes by. And then, are You Being Served is set in a department store with the ladies and menswear departments and just contention between the two, occasionally teaming up together to go against someone else. That one's a little bit more crass. As Time Goes By is not crass. As Time Goes By is, I guess, more, it's more sweet and sedate. It's just an older couple rekindling their love. Um, there's not a lot of drama and silliness, but it is very sweet and it's nicely done. And it is um, it is performed by Judy Dench and I can't remember his name, but I'll find it and put it on the screen. Anyway, you can't go wrong with Judy Dench. And then Are You Being Served is definitely a little bit more crass. It's more like the evening television when the kids were in bed sort of thing, but it's funny. I have some fallout with this red, but it's no big deal because I'll clean it up later. That's pretty, I like that. Now I'm gonna grab the shimmer. For the shimmer, I'm gonna start with a flat C brush and take the shade Citron, and I'm gonna dip into the pan and then spray the brush. Now there's a show that I grew up with, like we watched it every chance we could, and we would watch all of the PBS fundraiser drives, and it was called Faulty Towers, starring John Cleese and Prunella Scales. I'm gonna spray my brush. And again, just like Judy Dench, can you go wrong with John Cleese? Can you? Is it possible? John Cleese is awesome. I am going to take Citron, and start that in the center of my... Oh, 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 that's so good. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Look at that shimmer. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, I've gotten distracted. Look at this shimmer. Oh my word, that's so nice. That is so good. It's like butter. Oh, it goes on beautifully. Okay, um, can't go wrong with John Cleese. And so the premise of Faulty Towers is that Basil Faulty and his wife, Sybil, own a hotel. And Basil Faulty is a bit of an ignoramus, kind of a nincompoop. He's, he's, he's just rather a fumbling personality. He's always getting into scrapes. He's often lying to his wife and it never works out for him. And I think there was, I think there were, two episodes where he was in the right but because he's so often in the wrong nobody believed him and he was trying so hard to prove that he knew what he was talking about and this thing that he was trying to prove was actually happening and no one believed him and uh, the audience like the viewer we actually feel bad for him because we're like oh but come on believe basil but no one's going to because he's always lying but it's really funny. He's got a Spanish waiter who speaks very, very poor English, and Faulty thought that he spoke Spanish when he hired him, and turns out he didn't. And so there's always miscommunication there. And then they have a young woman who works for them in like maid and serving capacity, and she's quite competent. Faulty never recognizes it. And so she's she's always, you know, either cleaning up his messes or trying to keep him from getting in trouble with his wife who is actually more business-minded, but again, Faulty never realizes it. And Faulty has this idea of, you know, the British are very concerned with class, and Faulty has this, this dream of catering to the upper class, the higher echelons of British society. But he is not a classy fellow, and he does not run a classy establishment, and he's always making mistakes and stuff, and you just can't do that when you're trying to cater to people who are coming and spending more money. And so, yeah, it's funny. It's a funny show. He's just a blundering fool, really. <laughs> now I want to take, with the same flat brush, I'm going to grab Yum. 
which is the lightest shimmer in the palette. I'm gonna put this on dry and just see how it performs. I wanna put Yum right there, right off in the inner corner to finish it off. This is more of a light pink, peachy kind of matte, uh, shimmer. It's really nice. Then what else? Oh, it's, so those shows were like well established when I was growing up. Those shows are from like the 60s and the 70s. They were made around the time my parents were growing up. Something that's a little more modern would be things like Poirot, which is of course Hercule Poirot. He is the famous Belgian detective. He's very, very clever. And I love, I love the mysteries. I love them. So Poirot is, I think, 12 seasons. Poirot went on forever. It was a really long running show. Um, and I've watched every episode. <laughs> uh, Poirot went on forever. And oh, I'm sorry. Do you see these shadows? These are so good. Oh, they're so good. Let me start the other eye and then I'll do my under eye. Poirot was just an incredibly intelligent and sort of different thinking sort of fellow. He, he looked at the world in a slightly different way, but extremely logically, and that made him a very good detective. Um, he's the detective from Murder on the Orient Express. If you've heard of that, that's a Poirot story written by Agatha Christie. Um, but there were tons and tons more, and it's probably my favorite line of mysteries, acted out by David Suchet. He does such an incredible job in that role. He, he just becomes the character, and he did a wonderful job. I'm pretty sure he won several awards for that role. But Poirot's amazing. I also, when I had Britbox, was getting into The Midsummer Murders, which ran for even longer. And I started watching it at the very beginning of the series. And I think I got into like season nine or 10 before we canceled Britbox. But Midsummer Murders, Again, just a, a murder mystery detective series. I also watched Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries, which was was a much more lighthearted version. So Poirot and Midsummer Murders were more serious. Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries were a little bit more playful. It was set in the 1920s, and Miss Fisher was a was a lady detective, which was it got quite a lot of looks from people. But she was doing a good job, and, and she in the beginning of the series was kind of at odds with the local um, chief detective, but then over time they form a friendship and then there develops this sexual tension between them, but he's married and they can't do anything about it. And eventually he gets divorced and they, they kind of continue to play into that sexual tension, but it's more, it's not done in an appropriate way. It's actually done very appropriately where they have feelings, but he's married and so they don't do anything. And then later he gets divorced and they just wait a while because they're not sure how this is gonna go. And they're really different personalities, but they still are drawn to one another. And the last one that I saw, I think I heard that they were coming out with more or they intended to come out with more episodes. But the last one I saw was kind of spoiler alert where they do end up deciding to go out and you know, see how it's gonna work. And I really like that show because there was a really nice blend of characters and personalities within within the storyline. You had people who were serious, you had people who were not so serious, and I don't know, it was just a really fun show. I liked that one a lot, actually. Plus there were some great costumes, like Miss Fisher had some great outfits, and I am not a big fan of the 1920s clothing. It's not my favorite, but I think that overall, her frocks were really lovely. I don't know how accurate they were, but they looked to me to be relatively accurate. I mean, they looked like what I would expect of higher class sort of clothing and party frocks and fancier clothes and whatnot for that time. Apparently she had some family money, so she was more of a wealthy woman. And that just made the fact that she was a lady detective all the more interesting to people because, I mean, first off, why would she need a job? And secondly, why would she associate with the lower class of people who are involved in crimes? But she took the jobs because she was interested in solving crimes and being a detective and not just existing on bonbons and parties. I think Pompidou deepens out this orangey sort of tone really nicely. It, it makes it feel more, a little more fiery with the orange into red. It's a nice deepening shade for these colors. 
I'm going back with my flat brush and taking C column on the other side now. Now because I haven't had BritBox for a while, I don't know if Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries are available on BritBox anymore, um, or if you can find them anywhere to watch. I'm sure you can. I mean, it's a new, it's a newer show. It's definitely not older. It's newer, and um, it's just a lot of fun. You know, I hear my husband starting to stir the floor above me creaks so i'm going to quickly finish up this lower lash line and then i'll go off camera and finish everything up because he might come downstairs and interrupt this video so let me just finish up um i'm gonna take a small shader brush grab the shade tangerine and run that on the whole lower lash line this red shadow fallout in the outer corner here i will deal with that by grabbing some concealer and just tidying up that whole area with that same brush. Now I'm going to take the shade Extra Toppings, which is a darker um, pinky sort of peach, and I'll put that right here. Ooh, that's a pretty color. And then with the brush that I was using for the red, no additional product, I'm just um, going over where the matte meets the shimmer here. Oh, actually I wanted to take, I wanted to take Tangy. I'm going to use like all the shades in here. I wanted to take Tangy, which is a more peachy matte, and place that right here. Yeah, so now I've got basically three shimmers on my lid. But they're all so pretty. How do you choose? I don't know if you can see, my lighting's awful. It's, mm, what time is it? I got up at like 4.40, so it was about five when I started filming. Um, over here, the shade Yum by itself is a kind of a light toned yellowish sort of peach color. But then down here, when I'm laying it now on top of the tangerine matte, it's, it's kind of morphing into an orange shade. It's lovely. It's not surprising because I'm laying it on top of an orange, but the way that it's grabbing the undertones of the orange shadow and just kind of turning it into a metallic version of that shadow is really nice. Okay, I want to do a waterline color of white, and then I'm going to go off camera and throw on some liner and everything else, and I'll be back to show you how it all looks. All right, here's how it turned out. On my lips, I'm wearing the shade Hot Spark from ColourPop's Lip Oil. And on my face, I actually used this shade right here, Double Scoop, as a face highlighter. Hopefully you can see that. So it's got a little bit of orangey tone to it. I was thinking of using a more peachy shade from the BH Cosmetics Rose palette, but then I was like, oh wait, I could just use a shade from the eyeshadow palette. So there you go, this is the shade Double Scoop. And it's actually a really pretty highlighter. Um, that is everything, I think. I put on some mascara, did a wing, and yeah, there you go. I think the look is gorgeous. I think that this palette amazing yes it's monochromatic it's not the most exciting color story wise like you're gonna get an orange or coral look from it but that's okay i bought it because i love orange shadows and i had very few represented in my collection this quality is amazing i completely understand why people were raving about the sweet shop palettes i'm considering getting pistachio if i can find it for a good price i got this one for 10 bucks i mean you can't complain look at this result yes i pulled in one shade from another palette just to deepen it up but it's gorgeous. It performs beautifully. It's really, really good quality. This is a smash hit for BH Cosmetics. And did you see, I mentioned in a video that I filmed yesterday, but you might not have seen, BH Cosmetics looks like they're coming back on scene. They shared on TikTok a whole slew of new travel palettes. No inside pictures, just the outside packaging. And it's really exciting. Their travel palettes are really nice. The Passion of Paris is one of them. And the quality is amazing. So if they have been recovered from Makeup Revolution, then that's awesome news. And if the formula is just as good or better, even better news. And I'm just really excited to see the reveal, what the palettes are going to look like. <laughs> you know, I was thinking yesterday, I'm like, I'm not actually disappointed. I'm glad that the brand seems to have survived. And I'm glad that they're coming out with new things and getting people excited. I'm really actually glad about that. But part of me was like, oh man, now I'm going to want more BH stuff. <laughs> Must control myself. Must control myself. Okay, that's my whole video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the look. Comment below if you've got any of these Sweet Shop palettes and what you think of them. Which ones are your favorites? Let me know if you have any specific requests. I have one subscriber who wanted me to do a specific video, so that sort of in my queue. I haven't filmed it yet, but I definitely do sometimes take requests. Remember to like and subscribe if you would like to see lots more colorful content. And until I see you in my next video, have a lovely day. Bye!